the lecture on satellite based monitoring of aerosol particulate matter and, and the as you know that uh, this course is on the atmospheric uh, remote sensing of atmospheric and oceanic hazards so air pollution is also one of the atmospheric hazard and which is of concern to all of us so whether we are common citizens uh, researchers or anywhere on the earth so it is affecting us and uh, you know that uh, the atmosphere consists of so many uh, gases and particulates so uh, particulate matter is one of them so in order to assess or in order to assess this hazard we have to continuously monitor it and understand its processes and then only we can uh, try to minimize it and take actions uh, giving this background you can see that uh, this is the image of uh, the uh, this region india and china is the developing countries in this region and uh, it is emitting a lot of uh, particulates in the atmosphere as you can see the extreme right hand side it's of 2005 middle one is of 2009 and the left hand side is 2015 you can see that uh, the uh, the portion to the uh, north and east of the china the level of the pollution that is this is aerosol aerosol optical depth which is known as particulate aerosol is increasing it means that the uh the sources are high and the sources uh, put lot of uh, pollutants in the atmosphere and to to the policy is implemented then subsequently from 2010 or 2012 uh, this has decreased and you can very well see that 2015 it has substantially decreases decreased over the china china region whereas our indian indian uh, india region it is continuously increasing and after 2015 due to the government policies of uh, national clean air program this has also decreased subsequently so hence uh, the techniques whether it is ground based and this is particularly the satellite based techniques are very much important and it gives a synoptic view and synoptic understanding of uh, the continuous monitoring as well as the Uh, then uh, the checks and balances one has to uh, un- put in to minimize or to understand the level of the pollution because of this uh, particulate matter because uh, it not only affects the environment but also the human health as you can see on left hand side the lungs the infected lungs so uh, extreme left are healthy lungs and the right one are the uh, the infected lungs which continuously it's a, um, adult lungs which is continuously inhaled uh, the air consist of contaminated air now this also uh, most of you know that the composition of the atmosphere consist of uh, constant gases which are in uh, standard composition like nitrogen 78% oxygen is another 21 percent argon similarly and others uh, trace gases as the word counts that it is in trace number and proportion proportion is very less uh, the but the impact is more and the carbon dioxide methane ozone and so on and other component are variable components which consist of the aerosols aerosols are the Uh, the class of the particles of definite sizes of course these sizes are larger than the molecules that is gases and they are uh, highly dynamic and variable from place to place and the lifetime is very less as compared to the gases and also the water, uh, water molecule or the uh, water vapor now in a nutshell what is pollution or what is air pollution because uh, the uh, particulates uh, or the gases uh, they when they occur in a concentration which endangers the 
health on the on the well-being of organisms living on the earth and then we can say that this is uh, in pollution uh, aerosols are an important part of it apart from the gases aerosols are the class of the particles on the solid or liquid particles that are suspended in the gaseous material or the atmosphere and uh, the sizes are larger than the gases uh, the point not not 1 to 100 microns and uh, we come across many uh, such examples like uh, fumes uh, dust fog mist smoke a uh, smoke and clouds these are all the classes of the aerosols and uh, uh, they are emitted they are formed and a uh, lot of processes happens and uh, these are broadly classified like uh, fine particles or uh, ultra fine fine particles and coarse particles uh, example right hand side you can see the image of uh, eastern india it is bangladesh and the bay of bengal uh, when there is a clean air or no uh, less pollution uh, we can see that we the from the satellite data uh, the the land masses and the water molecule water bodies are clearly visible but on the um, below image you can see that it is a winter image uh, due to the uh, the formation of the fog and the clouds the visibility is hindered so this is the clear example that uh, the the formation and the study of the pollution is important because this not only affect the environment but also the health now uh, the aerosol uh, also the important part is that uh, here the uh, the aerosols as i said this is a class and then aerosols are uh, emitted by primary and secondary uh, they are directly emitted or they are also just reacted or reactions in the atmosphere and then form the secondary part also uh, in uh, most of the environment ap applications uh, we come across uh, many terms one terminology is uh, total suspended particles which you know commonly known as uh, tsp and also the particulate matter pm so pm uh, uh, particulate matter depending on the size we segregate as um, particulate matter 1 particulate matter 2.5 and particulate matter 10 it means particulate matter 10 means all the particles whose size whose diameters are uh, size diameter are less than 10 microns pm 2.5 means all the aerosol particulate matter whose uh, sizes are less than 2.5 microns so these are fine particles and these are coarse particles particulate pm 2 pm and uh, we can say that uh, it is a generic term pm to uh, pm particulate matter and uh, generally it is used as a particulate pollution and uh, it is a heterogeneous discrete liquid or solid particle suspended in the air and it's a complex mixture where the uh, solid particles mix with the liquid droplets in the atmosphere and the, the complex mixture can be anything it can have a nitrates it can be sulfates it can be carbon carbonous uh, it can have dust it can have metals so it's a complex mixture of all these and uh, these are segregated only by the particle sizes so as i said uh, the sources the uh, they are uh, natural as well as anthropogenic so as you know that uh, most of the land mass is covered by oceans Uh, so the uh, oceanic uh, or the sea salt aerosols are the primary sources and the uh, highest uh, contribution or the concentration of the aerosols coming are coming from the uh, oceans uh, then uh, the dust aerosols of course the deserts and volcanoes they produce a lot of dust dust and the uh, sulfate uh, aerosols uh the then is the fossil fuel and biomass burning these are the anthropogenic uh, sources so humans use lot of uh, fuel and biomass burning and then uh, they contribute uh, to the uh, soot or the black carbon type of sources of aerosols
Now, uh, as I said, the uh, particular matter is a complex uh, mixture of many constituents, uh, the mixture of the smoke, nitrate, sulfates, and so on. And uh, these are the uh, pollutants which comprise comprises of not only particulate matter, but also different gases, as in my previous slide also, we have seen that uh, the gases, it's composed of many gases also. So in comparison uh, to human hair, uh, human hair is around 70 micron, that is 70 into 10 raised per minus six meter. So in, human hair is also very small. Uh, and in comparison to that, PM 2.5 is only 3% of that. So PM 2.5 is a 3% of the human hair. So, so fine particle it is. Of course, PM 10 is also small, but as compared to PM 2.5, it is much larger. So PM 2.5 is known as a fine particle and fine aerosol particle and PM 10 is known as a coarse, coarser aerosol particle. Uh, this also um, in uh, environmental science also we say that uh, PM, uh, PM10 is inhalable particles uh, because they can uh, infiltrate or they can uh, go inside the human respiratory system. So when we inhale the air, so uh, particulate matter PM10 is so small that it goes in the human respiratory tracts and uh, then finally it goes to the lungs. PM 2.5 is, is known as, also known as uh, the fine or the respirable particle. And uh, it is so small that uh, it can penetrate to lungs and then also it can go to the blood streams. In the tissues also it can penetrate. So dangerous it is. And then, uh, as I said, it is a mixture of many, uh, many metals and other things, mixture of many things. So it can have a nitrate, sulfates, metals, that is solid metals, uh, so poisonous materials. And once it goes to the blood streams, it, uh, it reacts and produces a lot of toxic materials. And then it harms the health of human beings. So the size, the fine particles are more dangerous than the larger. So dust particle is larger particle and uh, PM 2.5 is much larger, smaller particle. So I can say that the, the size of, or the mass of the particulate matter is directly linked to its potential for causing the high uh, health problems. So more fine the particles or the mass or the number density is more. So it means it can, it has a high potential or high uh, ability to cause the lot of health problems. So the question arises, uh, why do we care about aerosols? So in terms of the environmental thing, of course uh, it has, uh, because it deals with the public. So there is a uh, the visibility problem. Uh, so there is a public health, of course, uh, then visibility. Uh, then uh, it also dissolves uh, in the ocean uh, causing uh, because it is uh, as acidic in nature, so the when it dissolves, so your uh, ocean pH values are becoming more acidic. That is the hydrogen ion acid pH value means more of hydrogen ion, so it becomes acidic, and it is dangerous for the aquatic species or marine life, marine ecology. Uh, when the primary aerosols are emitted, they also uh, react in the atmosphere. Uh, from gas to particle conversion. And then uh, there is a chemistry change in the atmosphere. So that also happens. More of the aerosols are emitted, so atmospheric chemistry also changes. Then uh, if there are more aerosol, then it becomes a uh, seed for the, or the cloud condensation nuclei, and it helps for the formation of more clouds. And uh, when there is more clouds, so there is a change in the uh, earth energy budget. So the energy budget also changes as the incoming solar radiation and uh, that is the incoming, uh, that is uh, incoming and uh, the radiation which is reaching on the earth. So there is a change in that. So there is a change in the earth radiation budget. Also then this leads to the climate forcing. So how much energy is uh, coming to on the surface? How much energy is trapped in the atmosphere? 
and how much energy goes at the top of the atmosphere. So if more is so less amount of energy is goes to the top of the atmosphere, so it means not much energy is trapped, and then uh, this contribute to the heating, and then it is also related to the climate or the global warming and other scenarios. So the as I said, the impact of uh, this particle matter one is environmental impact. So in if as I said the cloud cloud condensation nuclei, one is that a lot of formation of the clouds. So it can also alter the cloud properties. So more cloud doesn't mean that it has more rainfall, but uh, what happens is uh, more cloud means more albedo. That is, uh, it will reflect more of the uh, solar radiation before it reaches on the ground. So that changes the earth radiation budget. Second important point is it also changes the thermal structure of the atmosphere. It uh, sometimes it uh, weakens the uh, monsoon system because of the hydrological cycle and the, because of the onset of the uh, monsoon and uh, when enhanced uh, or the more uh, aerosols are put, uh, in the atmosphere. So what happens is due to the uh, scattering or the absorption nature of the aerosol, this also perturbs or weakens the uh, the monsoon system. Also, it has directly impact on the uh, crop yield, on the crop uh, acreages, that is on the agriculture sector. And uh, it can, because of the change of the perspiration patterns, it can cause the droughts and floods sometimes. Uh, also, uh, there are many studies which shows that the uh, the aerosols can uh, simulate the tropical cyclones. So it can, uh, you know, there is impact on the tropical cyclones also. So uh, in the atmosphere, due to the absorption nature of the aerosols, so the, it uh, affects the convective processes uh, like uh, cyclogenesis uh, by, that is the reducing the vertical uh, wind shear, which intensifies the development of the tropical cyclones. The, warming nature of the aerosol or absorbing of uh, absorbing aerosols when they go to high latitudes or high altitudes and particularly over the glaciers and they when they are deposited on the on the ice or the glaciers and then the absorbing nature they uh, melt they help in melting of the glaciers so this is one of the factor which is contributing negatively uh, or decreasing area of the glaciers and particularly over the Indian Himalayas. Uh, as I said, the uh, visibility is one of the uh, finest example and uh, it reduces a lot of visibility and concerning many activities. Also, it damages uh, to the environment. Uh, then, uh, of, of course, the uh, aesthetic effects also because uh, these aerosol, the poisonous nature of the aerosols or the particulate matter aerosols, they also deposit on many monuments, uh, the cultural heritage sites, monuments, uh, UN heritage sites. And what happens is that uh, they put a lot of stains and damages. They, they react with the, uh, what you call marbles or the, uh, the structure of the monuments, the stone of the monument and the, and the, uh, the material. So what happens, it, it damages stains and all that. So a lot of financial losses are there and the, historical aspects also, aesthetic effects it loses. On the health imp uh, effects, um, the direct effects are when there is a lot of manipulation, though it is having an uh, uh, allergy effect on the, particularly on the nose, eyes, and throat. That is the uh, first-hand uh, impact. Also, uh, sometimes it has inflammation of the lungs and a lot of diseases when it, when uh, a long exposure any humans or any child or any living organism have a life um, continuous exposure. So lot many chronic diseases also like chronic lung diseases, heart diseases, uh, bronchitis, premature deaths, uh, pregnant women also um, are affected, uh, children less than five years, the premature deaths also are there, uh, pneumonia, uh, all asthma and uh, cancerous also, chronic diseases. And uh, recent studies also show that uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, they also contribute, you know, the air pollution can affect, you know, they simulate the type 2 diabetes also. 
So as I said, the uh, main types of pollution. So in uh, main types of pollution, vehicular pollution, then uh, power plants, refineries, industries, biomass, biofuel, that is fuel, uh, biofuel and uh, fossil fuel. Uh, if you see in a nutshell, on an average, uh, the uh, the PM 2.5 mostly is uh, emitted from the transport sector, which uses the anthropogenic uh, activities mostly, mostly the biofuel and fossil fuel. Followed that is transport and industry are the major sources of it. PM 10, PM 10 of course the dust is contributing uh, majority and and the transport and industry as well. Now important point is, as I said, why size matters. I, in my initial slides also I showed as the size decreases, so it has increased the potentiality or the impact or to hinder or the, uh, the affect the environment, all the health impacts. Uh, many studies also have proven, uh, many laboratory and other studies also have proven that uh, the toxicity and the, as the size decreases, the, the toxicity also increases. Uh, this uh, study, the particular graph you see, it shows that uh, the toxicity uh, shows that the rate of uh, particle deposition in uh, major regions of human respiratory is highest for the fine particles, that is PM 2.5, which means that PM 2.5 is highly toxic when it is deposited in any part of the respiratory organs, whether it is uh, from nose, uh, nose to the throat or from throat to the lungs, diaphragm. So any anywhere it deposit, it, it produces a toxic and slowly it goes in the bloodstream tissues. Uh, also the uh, fine particle that is PM 2.5, uh, it uh, also is a high, it has a high capability for light scattering. So in terms of uh, when uh, solar radiation when it is in the atmosphere. So it is highly scattered, scattering uh, solar radiation to solar radiation and uh, as compared to the uh, coarser particle. Uh, also the lifetime because how much it can stay uh, as compared to the larger particle, the PM 2.5 has high uh, lifetime that is can stay for long uh, around, it is around 10,000 times more lifetime than the PM10. It means if there are sm some a few particles of PM10 or PM2.5 than PM10, but it is more dangerous because it has more lifetime. So it can react, it can be toxic, it can scatter, and it can have many uh, processes in the atmosphere. Now uh, the air when I say when I we say that air pollution because the uh, studies worldwide also shows that it is uh, one of the uh, highest uh, killer in terms of the deaths, uh, human deaths all over the world and uh, major uh, contribution around 50 to 60% contribution is from India and China. And if you say um, only of PM 2.5 and India and China contribute more than 60% deaths all over the world. So highest death rates are contributed or it is a concerning situation for India and China in terms of the deaths from the air pollution. And uh, uh, slowly, as uh, from year to year, uh, the deaths due to the air pollution is increasing. And uh, in 2020, it, it was standing at fourth position, but now it slowly goes in the higher positions. It means more deaths are reported from the air pollution. Also that uh, we can say that around, uh, if I say in numbers, it is around 6.67 or 7 million, 7 million humans uh, die due to the air pollution worldwide. And uh, out of that, 1.7 and 1.8 million are from India and China alone. And in that PM2.5, and three, more than 3 million deaths are only due to the PM2.5 from India and China. Uh, the uh, the negative point here is because uh, not only it uh, impacts uh, the health and the financial losses of individual or organization, but also it decreases the life expectancy. And uh, on an average, the life expectancy uh, due to the longer uh, exposure, uh, it's around uh, four to five years, it can decrease 
the life of humans. And if you see the different continent wise, uh, the South Asia and Southeast Asia are the highest uh, polluted regions where the people or the humans life expectancy is decreasing as compared to the other regions of the world. But uh, um, with different regions, different governments, different countries, uh, they uh, now have understood the concern, understood the danger of the air pollution. And uh, as, as, as in my initial slide, I showed that in China from 2012 onwards, the, uh, the government has adopted many very stringent policies uh, to restrict or to limit or to decrease the pollution. Because the first thing is we have to measure it, we have to understand it, then we can adopt the policies. Similarly in India, uh, having done a lot of studies and understood continuous monitoring, we have understood the level and the rising level of it. And uh, due to many programs, particularly the National Clean Air Program, which the government of India adopted. And uh, that is the agenda, its target is to reduce uh, the air pollution by 20 to 30%. Uh, of 2017 level, and this has to be achieved by 2025. And uh, there are around uh, 125 non-attainable uh, cities. And uh, we have achieved also, uh, you can see that uh, from 2016 in South Asia, and South Asia, particularly India is uh, a dominant uh, country in there. And uh, from 2016 onwards, uh, around uh, uh, 15 to 25% has decreased, uh, from, but in fact, it is more than the other region, but, but from the previous levels, uh, it is showing on a decline, but on a concentration level, it is much more higher. So that is also a concern, but uh, more uh, policies has to be uh, adopted on a stringent pattern. Uh, also, uh, one important point here is missed is that also not only uh, it is had that, uh, if we say the economic uh, damage uh, to the countries or the region, uh, like for example, uh, in uh, the air pollution, on in totality the air pollution that it uh, damages along around uh, eight billion dollars per day to the uh, on an average. It is around 3.3% of GDP. So that, that's a very big number. And if we see that major, major countries like China, US and India, uh, they bear the maximum proportion of it because the emission rates are also high. Uh, so it is estimated that uh, the loss uh, to, to, uh, due to the air pollution in China is estimated around 900 uh, billion, 900 uh, billion dollars per year. Uh, to US, it is around 600 billion, and India is around 150 billion dollars. So 150 billion dollars uh, is very huge. Around it's a five percent of our GDP, and if only PM 2.5 we can we concern about, it's around 2.5 percent of the GDP. So that's the annual loss due to only PM 2.5. That is the health, the environment the human losses. So put in everything, it's around 2.5% of total GDP. So that's that's a big number. So uh, for that, uh, so many, as I said, the many countries and organizations have come together and uh, uh, they have uh, put in a lot of effort for, first thing is to measure the uh, air quality monitoring efforts has to be done. So uh, some techniques has to be developed for monitoring. And in that uh, remote sensing is a very important technique uh, to understand a synoptic overview and synoptic and on continuous basis. And uh, then the effects of the air pollution has to be understood. And then they have to put in a central policy. And uh, similarly, the uh, many organizations have come up uh, with uh, uh, air quality, what you call these national air quality standards. So, uh, it is. Uh, it helps to understand at which level the air is polluted uh, at a particular time of the day, or a particular day, or in a average uh, in a year, and then uh, it is uh, directly associated with the uh, health effects, and that might have concern. So, uh, for example, WHO 
World Health Organization uh, has come up with the national air quality standards guidelines in 2005 and then it has revised very stringent in 2021. So you see PM 2.5 WHO, it's a 10 is the annual average and 25 microgram per meter cube is the 24 hour uh, one day average of it. And it has now come up with a more stringent that is five microgram per meter cube annual and 24 average it is 10 microgram. So if the concentration of PM 2.5 is below 10 micrometer, it means it is a satisfactory or a healthy air and above it is, it is a non-healthy air. And in the 10, above 10 also, there are many categories, or about 25, there are many categories and it is said that it is uh, moderate or high or very high or a severe category like that. Similarly, the US has a uh, national air quality standards. Uh, India has also adopted in 2014, uh, the AQI, we say in the air quality index. And you can see that there are different, uh, these are the constituents of the air pollution because there are eight parameters which constitute the air uh, air pollution. And these eight put together, they constitute the air quality index. And in this eight, uh, minimum uh, three has to be measured, minimum three. And in that three, particulate matter has to be measured compulsory. So it means the particulate matter composition or the aerosol particulate matter is an important constituent in uh, monitoring air pollution or in calculation of the air quality. So that's uh, the PM is must. So uh, you can see that PM 2.5, uh, 0 to 30, 30 to 60. So these are categories, this less than 30, it's uh, good. Uh, 60, it is satisfactory. 90 is moderate. And as it crosses 120 microgram per meter cube on a 24 hour scale, uh, so it goes in the poor, very poor and severe category. And uh, because uh, when it crosses uh, the very poor category, so it gives a, uh, what you call the unsafe uh, uh, ad advisory. And then uh, the local administration can authorize or take steps to control it. So sometimes you have seen that in the NCR and Delhi region. So local administration gives an ad uh, advisory uh, to shut the schools or uh, the, colleges and the uh, traffic, it has controlled traffic so that the air quality doesn't go in a you know very uh, bad phase or the severe category. Now, as I said that uh, satellites measure has the ability to measure the synoptic view. So uh, what it does, uh, the, uh, the, so the earth receives the electromagnetic radiation from the sun. So that is, and which travels through the space and reaches again. So double time it crosses the earth atmosphere system. So the radiation that interacts with the earth atmosphere and the surface and the uh, radiation when it crosses, so either, either it is reflected or absorbed. And uh, the satellite measures both reflected and emitted energy. Now depending on the satellites, uh, this inner, uh, energy is measured uh, in a specific portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, that is the wavelength. And then uh, different constituents of the atmosphere, uh, that is, we are talking about aerosol, uh, whether on the land or the ocean, uh, it is measured uh, with the, uh, it is measured as depending on the properties and the wavelength of the incoming solar radiation. Uh, the, the few examples uh, of the uh, satellite data, like MODIS is one of the example, a moderate resolution imaging spectrometer. Uh, it has 36 channels and uh, uh, the channels, uh, certain channels are devoted only for uh, measurement. So there are different techniques. Uh, <coughs> sorry, and, the, and, the, and there are some defined algorithms uh, which uh, uses uh, the lookup tables and that is uh, already uh, measured techniques. Uh, what will happen, the rate to transfer equations, we, we use a rate transfer equations and uh, depending on the, uh, the concentration, that is whether it is a fine mode particle or the coarse mode particle, then it gives a, a, a proper weighting and weightages 
and then it calculates the aerosol properties and ultimately the aerosol optical depth. Uh, MISR is a multi-angle imaging spectrometer. So it has uh, nine view angles and uh, it measures from different view angles. So uh, the more uh, the mo more angles we say that it will, it uh, interacts more with the atmosphere and then when it interacts more with the atmosphere. So there are more chances of uh, determining or delineating the uh, atmospheric properties or aerosol optical properties. Uh, visible infrared imaging radio, radiometer suit. This is a polar satellite, which is having 25, 24 channels. And this also measures, apart from many other properties, you see the primary uses. Uh, so uh, it also measures the aerosols. Sentinel 5P, uh, Tropomy. Tropomy is a sensor in the Sentinel 5P satellite. Uh, so it is a uh, hyperspectral kind of a thing. And uh, the uh, it, it measures in lot many spectral ranges. And it is a high resolution satellite, uh, which measures the not only the gases, but also the aerosol properties. And uh, seven kilometer resolution. Ozone monitoring instrument is also one of such uh, instruments for measuring the aerosol, particularly the absorbing kind of aerosol, uh, because it has a UV uh, UV channel. So ultraviolet uh, channels are used for mostly for the absorbing aerosols. Uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, there are some sensors which are uh, on board of the geostream satellites. So one of the geostream satellite is the Korean satellite, is Comsat, and uh, it it covers uh, uh, the Southeast Asia and the uh, South Asia, and it apart from the aerosols, it also measures lot many other gases uh, compositions also, and which is helpful for uh, you know in totality of the and understanding the totality of the air, air pollution. GoSat uh, greenhouse gas observing satellite. It is a Japanese satellite, uh, geostream satellite, uh, that it also uh, measures, uh, sorry, it, it is a sun synchronous satellite, and it uh, not only measures the aerosol, but also different gases. Uh, this measures the uh, total uh, columnar aerosol, uh, total columnar uh, aerosol, but if you want to find the atmosphere profiling of the atmospheric layers and the aerosol profiling of uh, different uh, different heights in the atmosphere. So we need a LIDAR kind of instrument. So uh, Calypso, that is cloud aerosol LIDAR and infrared pathfinder satellite. Uh, it is an important uh, LIDAR instrument, which is not only used for the cloud, cloud heights and cloud information, but also for the uh, backscattering of aerosol and other aerosol properties as well. And different uh, uh, like different aerosol types also, because as I said, the, uh, the uh, sea salt or the black carbon or the sulfate. So it also can segregate uh, vertically at different heights. What are the uh, aerosol concentration as well as different aerosol types. So in a nutshell, uh, we have a two platforms. One is in the polar satellite and one is in the geostationary satellite. You know well uh, what is polar and what is geostationary. I repeated, polar is uh, which goes from north to south and it goes, it can measure a uh, whole globe. Uh, it is a sun synchronous, meaning that uh, at same solar time, it measures for each region in the globe. And it is around uh, 600 to 800 kilometers above the surface of the earth. It rotates from north to south. Whereas uh, the geostationary, it is uh, the 36,000 kilometer because the orbital speed of the satellite and the Earth is same, so it is in a, in a you know lock system, and uh, it measures. It always sees a certain portion of uh, the Earth that is a regional coverage, and uh, the repetitivity is very high. Apart from the polar, it is uh, this is geostationary is every half an hour to 15 minutes, and uh, high uh, temporal uh, hazards can be uh, can be easily traceable or understood from the for example, forest fire. For example, if you want to see the uh, the 
the air pollution movement of the air pollution the trajectory of the air pollution so you require high temporal resolution so in that the geostationary satellites plays an important role for monitoring and understanding it but if you want to see the um, in a total uh, globe sense uh, different regions of the world so one has to use the uh, polar satellites like modis misir virs omi sentinel and uh, in the geostationary only few countries have that uh, operational geostationary program so india is also one of them uh, insat program and uh, in the geostationary platform there are uh, apart from environmental satellites there are also uh, communication and uh, other types of satellites uh, insat 3d or 3dr is a uh, is a environmental type of satellite uh, which is under the insat program uh, us has the ghost program uh, msc or the metsat program or the sivri is the uh, european satellite program uh, and himavari is japanese program so this is, these are the some details of the uh, insat 3d so it has imager as well as sounder as i said sounder is important uh, for understanding the vertical profile in the atmosphere not only it measures uh, it un understands the temperature humidity and uh, winds but also for understanding the uh, the aerosol concentration also imager is used for understanding the uh, forest fire or the aerosol which is the main contributor for the uh, in the pollution in the atmosphere so this is some some snapshot of it so every half an hour uh, the insat 3d this is every half an hour one can visualize and when you see the temporal high temporal changes Uh, over a region suppose there is a dust storm uh, so uh, how the dust storm um, can be monitored and you know see the uh, the uh, the trajectory of it one can also club uh, with the air mass trajectories and one can also model it uh, whether uh, in next future uh, means in next 6 hours or next uh, 48 hours or next 72 hours what will be the scenario where the air pollution will hit or where the air pollution according to masses where it will flow from one region to other region this is just a snapshot of how uh, this is during the post monsoon season when there is a stubble burning uh, in the northern india particularly in the indo-gangetic plain punjab and haryana uh, there is across the border and on the indian part so uh, because the burning is also across the border and also how it influences because air masses air parcels which come across how the it influences uh, uh, different regions and the aerosol particulate matter concentration is calculated on it and uh, then it completely encompasses the and uh, the ncr region and the uh, eastern indo-gangetic plain and uh, we all know that on the ground also we have seen uh, that a high smoke and cloud patterns are also seen there and this is also evident from the measurements on the ground so the cpcb and other uh, environmental instruments they measure the pm 2.5 and pm 10 which shows very high range beyond the uh, standard level also it crosses uh, uh, four times or five times of the standard level standard uh, uh, air quality standards and which is very dangerous for human health also uh, we see that uh, the uh, from the aerosol optical depth because particulate matter there we cannot have a direct estimation from the satellite data so there are indirect techniques uh, either you because aerosol optical depth is a major uh, major parameter for estimation of particulate matter uh, because particulate matter is a mass and uh, uh, then the raw technique is to use the regression model between uh, aod and pm 2.5 Uh, there are the standard models also multiple uh, regression of multiple variable model uh, variable model which develops the relationship between the multiple variables uh, multiple variables means uh, the mostly meteorological variables because uh, they describe the uh, the pollutant emission transport and, and dispersion in the atmosphere uh, for example the uh, boundary layer the wind speed the humidity uh, the temperature and you know, other things so these things are kept uh, put in the model for the uh, multiple regression models uh, 
I'm going to variable model and then uh, one try to estimate the uh, particulate matter. Also, there are advanced techniques uh, like uh, artificial neural networks or uh, the uh, other techniques also are used for estimation of the particulate matter. So depending on the choice of the model and the level of details you want, one wants that, so one has to estimate it. Uh, this is just an example of it. Uh, on the left hand side, there is a aerosol optical depth from the satellite data. This is from the inside data, inside 3D data. And uh, we can see that uh, during the post monsoon season over Punjab and Haryana, uh, there is high emission of aerosol optical depth. Uh, and uh, this is also uh, visible in the PM 2.5 because more of the emission than fine particles also more emitted over this endogangetic plane over NCR region and PM 2.5. The dust also, uh, dust and smoke also is very high in that. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I have covered what are required for uh, the understanding the uh, the atmospheric uh, hazard, particularly over the uh, air pollution. So this is just a sense that the air pollution, uh, how we can monitor from the <coughs> satellite data and what parameters one can assume and then uh, how the researchers can incorporate uh, their study using the uh, satellite and the grounded integration of it. Thank you very much.